Hey, welcome back to the Paul Wedding Show. This is one of your hosts, Ray Parnello. I want to give the phone number 248-848-1310. That's 248-848-1310. Please call in uh, with your with your questions and comments. Um, let's make this a uh, uh, broader um, conversation. And we're, we're joined here with in studio with Sheriff Wickersham uh, on the topic of online predators and how parents can protect them their their children from from such and i wanted to ask you sheriff is a child from a, a one parent household more at risk than another well I, you know i think the child from the one parent household i think has more opportunity mm-hmm. you know well we've seen in in one parent households you know the parent the single parent is is has to work and that child is is left alone to fend for themselves yeah. and um, you know, when you're alone, you have more time to be on the internet or yeah. on TV or, or do pretty much whatever you want to do because you don't have supervision. The parent sure. isn't there to say, okay, enough on the computer. Let's go do homework. Or why don't you go outside and play? That makes sense. So it does, uh, it does seem that the, uh, the, the one parent, uh, child would be more apt. Okay. Become a victim. Dr. Schwartz, I, I have a question for you. And, and it's similar, it, it's on, along the same lines as what we were just answering there. Um, when a child has self-esteem issues, um, issues of feeling uh, worthless, having problems building relationships at school, does this make a child a little bit more in terms of being susceptible to these online predators? Well, you know, I think it's a tricky thing because you can look at the popular crowd. And uh, I think what I have learned over the years is even kids with good self-esteem, um, you know, that do know how to speak up are still at risk for uh, still needing that extra attention or you know, the teenage stage can be uh, somewhat narcissistic. And so if somebody is mirroring how beautiful you are and how smart you are, uh, sometimes that doesn't matter. So I wouldn't just say, you know, it's very easy to focus on the kids with low self-esteem or who are depressed or, you know, um, very, uh, you know, lack social skills. But I think we would be missing a whole group if we just focused on you know, just the kind of uh, the assumption that it's just the kids that look like what they call emo, emotional kind of, you know, where they were black and they look really depressed. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I worry about the popular kids, too. I that's worry about a, all yeah, of them. Yeah, that's a great D- point. Dr. Now. Schwartz, um, th- you mentioned before the break the, the term grooming. Can you can you elaborate on that? How do these predators uh, groom kids in, in order to um, get closer to them? Well, they start out by just making friends, talking about their day, um, playing video games, whatever the child or teenager is interested in, they will hone their interest all about that. So if a girl likes to shop, they'll talk about shopping and really find whatever their interests are, and then they'll go in and they'll offer them little things or they'll, uh, you know, uh, send gift cards in the mail or, um, you know, they'll, uh, you know, kind of be really interested in all about their lives and um, Mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, give them compliments and build them up. And it's so subtle. Then they'll start to say, well, why don't you, you know, take a picture? Let's go to, you know, there are different stages. So one thing can be just chatting uh, online, but, you know, most of the teens are now doing uh, FaceTime or Google Chat or whatever, but it's Skype. So it's really face-to-face. And before you know it, the person will say, you know, and sometimes it's not even, they could use a teenager to speak for them. So sometimes it's not even the perpetrator. It's the perpetrator who uh, pays a teenager to look like it's a teen talking to a teen. Hmm. I mean, there's some very scary things out there. And then it gets to be where, you know, uh, young minors are taking off their clothes and uh, Mm. doing really uh, inappropriate things. And then they, you know, sometimes go face to face and meet them at malls or social settings. And uh, it's really frightening what's going on. I have a a question for you, Sheriff Wickersham. 
Well, 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 I was researching, you know, for the program today. I learned of two uh, two categories for for predators. The first had a goal of an actual face to face meeting, while the second, um, what uh, Dr. Schwartz was just talking about, was to exchange compromising photographs. Um, now, when does a face to face meeting? with one of these predators become criminal and is the exchanging of photographs something that you guys prosecute yep uh the first one you know the crime occurs when the predator arranges to to meet the child under under the age of 16 and for the purpose of sex and again a lot of that's the, the chat that goes back and forth and and has uh you know their only purpose to to meet with this child is, is for sexual it's one of their their uh, most popular excuses well i didn't know how old they were well, you know, that's what they they really can't say that because, again, you're going to have that documentation because a lot of these predators, you know, once, you know, the age is up there, unless the child, you know, is saying that I'm, you know, I'm 18, 19 and I'm of age, okay. you know, yeah. and, and that. But, you know, most of these uh, predators, you know, they're doing their homework, they're doing their research and uh, they know that that child's underage. And they're, you know, again, as we use this term, they're grooming them. They're, they're trying to, to befriend them, get them to come on their side and, 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 you know, feel that they're not the bad guy, you know, and yeah. that they're going to meet and uh, they're going to do things. Dr. Schwartz, you, I, we were speaking um, before the program and uh, I was telling you, and I only hope that uh, the little girl's parents aren't listening to the program right now, but I was telling you about the little girl, 14-year-old girl that had uh, sexual intercourse, or no, I'm, I'm sorry, that was raped by an 18-year-old classmate. And uh, she, she did speak up. And she went through so much hell um, th- with her classmates that uh, she eventually, uh, she committed suicide. I'm, uh, I don't want to go in, into... Uh, to her name, uh, Samantha Kelly, and on her Facebook page, they, they put up a, a memorial page, and the kids went on there and actually defaced it uh, with some gruesome pictures of this child in a, in, in a noose, and the caption at the bottom said, it's not rape if they're dead. What are wrong with these sick kids? Right. What's going on? What is going I mean, come on. What, yeah. What's wow. going on here? This yeah. is insane. Yeah. Right. So the bullying is continuing even after she has passed on. Um, you know, uh, again, technology is huge and, you know, it goes back to parenting and it goes back to watching your child. And um, what we know about teen suicide is that if a child is going to do it, they're going, they're going to do it and nothing's going to stop them. However, I think that when a child does speak up, I'm very passionate about this, that someone has definitely dropped the ball. This is not a blame thing, but it's an awareness thing uh, for teachers, educators, for a community, for peers, um, and definitely for parents to be aware. If something is going on and your child speaks up and they're not getting help, uh, whether it's you know therapy, medication, faith is very important. So if the family goes to church or temple, um, you know, community. If if the child is speaking up and nothing is done, um, then then we have a serious problem. And and I think that's what's going on right now. You know, um, whether it's mental illness or not, it doesn't really matter. There in Los Angeles, a huge, very devastating thing happened a few months ago, uh, where a a, a, a 13-year-old who had been bullied for a long time. She switched schools. She was actually a very good student. She was a singer, a dancer. She was in performing arts. She was the, you know, uh, the the head of the uh, play in musical theater. She was wonderful and really well-liked, but she had struggled um, with bullying for a really, really long time. She did speak up. Um, and then I think it went away for a little bit. And then when it came back, she was not able to tell anybody. And, but, uh, she, uh, 
wrote on her Facebook. She actually videotaped herself at 12 o'clock at night and said, I'm going to hurt myself. Oh, Jesus. Well, and, you know, um, we're going to go to a break, but one thing really quick is that we, we got to get the message to these kids. Speak up right away. Right away, and 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 good things can happen from that. The worst thing to do is hold it in. All right, well, we're going to go to break here, and when we come back, we will rejoin conversation with Dr. Wendy Schwartz and in our in studio guest, Macomb County Sheriff Anthony Wickersham. We'll be back shortly. All right, everybody, welcome back. You are listening to the Paul Wedding Show here on AM 1310 WDTW. I have a national expert here on the line, Dr. Wendy Schwartz, in studio, Sheriff Anthony Wickersham. Dr. Schwartz, can you go back and finish your answer that, uh, that, that you were talking about before the break? Yes, I was just talking about a sad situation, a 13-year-old girl in Los Angeles who <clears throat> was bullied and tried to deal with it in a public way, tried to deal with it on her own, and, uh, you know, she taped uh, her last kind of statement, and this is uh, kind of an epidemic, again, not only in Los Angeles, but all over the world, where kids are using technology to kind of, uh, you know, um, it, it say these statements, and uh, one of her friends saw this kind of uh, suicidal statement and immediately called 911 and did a great job at doing that intervention. Whether it was real or not, she instantly called 911 and said, I'm worried about my friend, please go over to the house. And uh, police, you know, knocked on the door, and the parents were sleeping, and they said, we need to see your daughter. And they said, oh, she's sleeping, everything's okay, and they said, we need to see your daughter. And unfortunately... Um, oh. You know, she had passed on. So, um, you know, it, it, the, the peer did a wonderful thing. And I think if anything that I can say is take it seriously. When a child says a suicidal statement, that's a big thing. Um, and a lot of people say, oh, they're being dramatic. Oh, this or that. Well, let me tell you, because this young lady at 13, she knew a lot of people around Los Angeles. She, her, and her life story was touched so deeply that I have never been so busy, um, whether I get emails at drwendyschwartz.com, um, asking and reaching out for referrals, for help for their kids, for assessments. Um, I have never hospitalized so many teenage uh, children for suicidal, uh, you know, not just ideation, but they had gestures, gestures they had a plan. Um, they were really crying out for help, and they met the criteria to be hospitalized because they needed that kind of uh, holding. And then the hospitals were filled up with teenagers who all were uh, reporting suicidal ideation. So it's not just uh, dramatic, but it really does trigger some other underlying issues, and it's all to be really taken seriously. And there's wonderful help out there, and I just want parents, you know, and teenagers to know that there's a lot of wonderful solutions that you can do actively so that we can all kind of help these kids and teens and give parents support. She's a nationally recognized expert on cyber bullies, on online predators. Dr. Schwartz, it was a pleasure to have you. Could you pass out your uh, your site information? And if any of the callers would like to speak to you, is, is, there, is there a number that somebody can get a hold of you at? Absolutely. So my website is uh, drwendyschwartz.com. That's drwendyschwartz.com. My uh, telephone number is 310-712-1230. And um, I just wanted to say that one of the things that any parent can do is they can call the 800 number for Department of Child and Family Services. And at any time, they can always report anonymously, or even teenagers can report anonymously crisis issues at 800-540-4000. And there's also the Suicide Prevention Hotline and the Trevor Project for gay and lesbian teens. So there's wonderful assistance out there. And I just want to say thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm really passionate in helping families and kids and teens. And I'm really grateful for this opportunity again. And uh, I'm finishing my book. 
What They Tell Me, and it's a book on teens that have educated me about all the current issues going on and how we can help them. So I look forward to hopefully coming back and sharing my wonderful work in the community with you all. Well, we'll be doing that, Dr. Schwartz, and thank you again for making the time today to be with us, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you so much, Dr. Schwartz. Thank you, gentlemen. Bye-bye.